quiet? Say that again? Now look, we don't use that kind of language on this channel. Do you hear me? I never heard such language. Hey everybody, welcome back to Collector of Stuff. Monty here. Glad to see everybody, glad to be seen. It's been quite a while since the uh, last video on this channel and um, my apologies for that. Uh, a lot of things going on here on the personal front, uh, continuing to deal with some health issues and uh, just some personal issues going on and uh, yeah finally able to um, put out a video in fact um, been collecting so much stuff uh, I really need to do a series of videos got a ton of comics got a ton of uh, movies and DVDs that you wouldn't believe got some uh, action figures and toys like crazy um, so yeah I, I'm gonna try and uh, and film a series of videos right now while we're doing this I don't know how many it's gonna end up being so I may go from nothing on this channel to flooding your uh, your YouTube box with uh, with some videos but hopefully none of them will be too long so you can watch them uh, however you want but I don't know how long they're gonna be uh, if I do all my my comics just my back issue comics not the new stuff not my pull list just the back issue stuff which I'm gonna do in this video we may be here a while tonight yeah but anyway uh, just wanted to say hello and uh, thanks for sticking in there with me um, you may have heard in the news about the um, uh, the um, Marines that were uh, murdered by the uh, terrorist here in Chattanooga that was right here in my home in fact uh, the shooting uh, that's been in the news uh, is about three miles from my house uh, so it's been crazy here but uh, Chattanooga is recovering and doing quite well and uh, everybody's pulling together and uh, it was a terrible tragedy uh, that happened but there's uh, these men have been well honored and uh, remembered uh, here locally if, if not nationally so um, yeah that that was a terrible event and uh, like I said that happened about three three miles from my home so uh, kind of scary when you realize those kind of things can happen just right down the road from where you live um, definitely definitely um, yeah, all kinds of uh, things. You saw my uh, McDonald's Minion toy there. Uh, just wanted to have a little fun with everybody making the comments about the foul language coming out of the the um, the Minions, the McDonald's uh, Happy Meal toys on there. So, um, my gosh, I don't even know where to begin with all this stuff. I'm just going to jump in there with no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing and uh, show you all kinds of stuff. Got some magazines. I don't even know if I'm going to get to those. Some vintage magazines. Um, like I said, toys, movies, um, back issue comics. Um, oh, speaking of, of all that, I guess a good place to jump in um, before we get to the comics. How about some books about comics? Um, oh, I um, was able to pick up a few uh, really nice books on comic collecting and the history of comics. Um, the first one here is uh, Stan Lee's How to Write Comics. And this is really cool because um, uh, Stan uh, talks about uh, all the aspects of writing and drawing and creating comic books. But he doesn't just use Marvel uh, books. He's using books from uh, from all different publishers and throughout. And there's nice um, uh, nice illustrations and so on and so forth. 
um, throughout the book. I actually just picked this one up just a few days ago. So, um, you know, there's the back side of it there. Oop, get my big fat finger out of the way there. But, uh, yeah, this is, this is very nice and um, features the work of superstar artists including Steve Ditko, Gil Kane, Jack Kirby, Alex Ross, and Joe Kubert. So, um, yeah, it's a nice book to have. Um, also, the one that is probably my favorite of the ones that I've picked up that I've been having a blast with, uh, this is called A Thousand Comics You Must Read. And there literally are a thousand comic books that are um, talked about throughout, uh, throughout the book. And um, he gives a brief synopsis of why uh, he thinks it's important. The book was actually uh, written by Tony Isabella. And um, I have a nice bug that just landed on my camera there. Let's see if I can blow him off there. Um, and it goes, um, it does have a section on uh, the new millennium um, into the early 2000s. So uh, he's real, uh, real big on Disney comics. There's a ton of Disney comics through, through here, which is, you know, and I'm a fan of Disney comics, but didn't expect to see that many of them listed in um, you know a thousand comics that you must read kind of book but anyways uh, if you can find this book it's uh, it is a great read I've been having fun going through and then going online and trying to find some of these books and um, of course some of them are very hard to find some of them are not that hard to find at all and and readily available uh, price-wise. Um, the other book, the third book that I picked up, and this is a heavy, it's all nearly a, a coffee table size book by Ron Goulart called Great American Comic Books. And this is just a history of comic books. Literally starts with what was considered to be the first comic, uh, you know, ever published. And then, um, just going through a history it is uh, as much uh, prose and written word uh, and so on as it is pictures and images so uh, really gives you uh, a full history of comics and um, what happened in each period um, you know, through the Golden Age and Silver Age and so on and so forth. Really, oh yeah, here's a nice back cover there. But, uh, yeah, Great American Comics, Ron, uh, I guess it's Goulart, uh, G-O-U-L-A-R-T. Uh, this is quite a, quite a heavy book, and quite a thick book, so, uh, yeah, if you can... You can find those last two especially, I really um, recommend and having a lot of fun reading through those as well. So uh, if you have those books or have read them, uh, let me know what you think about them down below in the comments. We'd love to, to hear from you. All right, now let's get to um, some back issue comics. I'm not even going to have time to get to... Uh, my pool list or new books that I'm reading here in this um, uh, in this video because I've got so so many. Let me straighten my shirt out there. There we go. Uh, I got so many back issues that I want to show you some really cool stuff. So let's get started with that. First off, um, I picked up about a year ago. Uh, I mentioned in a video that I had picked up a series of books from Skywald comics uh, on uh, Butch Cassidy. I actually love good western comics and western movies and that kind of stuff. Love my Lone Ranger books, those kind of things. And I picked up a series of books on uh, Butch Cassidy. And uh, to go along with that, I picked up the three issue set of the Sundance Kid. This is issue number one. And these were published in 1971. 
and uh, they're just really fun, very fun. If you're into Western comics, uh, Western stories, you would really love those. That's issue number two and issue number three. Uh, you can pause the video and look at those covers uh, more detailed if you want to, but I uh, really am into uh, uh, older uh, uh, Western comics, and these are just a ton of fun. Uh, really like that. 1971 Skywalk Comics, Sundance Kid. All right, now, I had told you before that I had been working on the um, uh, Aquaman series from 1991. Yeah, 91. That came out. It was a 13 issue series. Came out right before Peter David took over Aquaman and really changed him and all of that stuff. And I had uh, been able to acquire the first 12 issues. I've now finished that run by getting issue number 13. So that now completes that run of, uh, of Aquaman and I'm still working on the Peter David series nowhere near complete on that but I do have about the first 40 issues now of that run um, also I have started working on the 1993 Catwoman series from DC and uh, just started looking through a box where I had a few of those and I had like number one and number two and then it just sort of disappeared off into like issue number 14 and 15 and something like that I just had a handful of those so uh, was looking at um, uh, my comics shop my comic shop and uh, they had a great run of these so I picked them up here is issue number three from Catwoman uh, you can tell why she was so popular, obviously. Uh, number four. Number five. Number eight. I couldn't find six or seven, so we've skipped to number eight. Issue number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Issue number ten. And I picked up issue number 17. I think I've got like 14, 15, and 16, and I jumped ahead to 17. So you can see, still got uh, even holes to fill in those first 17 issues, but um, I did have the first couple of them there. Now, uh, what else did I want to show you? Oh, yeah. Um, Captain Strange Life may appreciate this. I bought. A huge well pretty darn good size lot of Charlton comics which I'd been wanting to get into I only had just a, a handful of Charlton comics maybe less than four or five I don't know or about four or five so I've been wanting to get into some more Charlton comics and so I've got a pretty good variety uh, as you'll see in this in this uh, pile of Charlton comics I picked up all of these for, um, I think I probably paid, if, if memory serves, about 30 bucks for all of this huge stack. Uh, yeah, I was able to get all this for 30 bucks. So uh, let's start off with some horror books. This is Ghostly Tales, number 130, from 1978. And uh, next we have Scary Tales. We had Ghostly Tales. Now we have Scary Tales, number 14, also from 1978. Those covers are great. Uh, Haunted Library, number 43, from 1979. Um... Here's an issue of Speed Buggy from Hanna-Barbera, issue number three, and this was from 1975. Anybody remember the old Speed Buggy uh, cartoon? Um, you, you know, Hanna-Barbera had such success with Scooby-Doo. Uh, it was so wildly popular um, that so many characters, or so many cartoons after that, 
were kind of patterned after Scooby-Doo. Maybe instead of a dog, they might have a whale. Uh, what was the show they did with the whale? Um, Jabberjaw, yeah, you know, where it was basically Scooby-Doo characters with a whale or shark. No, he was a shark. He was a shark, not a whale. Excuse me, a shark. Uh, this was kind of Scooby-Doo with a talking car, and you can see uh, the, and I forgot the characters' names, it's been so long since I've seen the cartoon, but you can tell that the character driving Speed Buggy, uh, right here, uh, bears a resemblance to Shaggy, and, um, you know, they, they kind of hit a pattern and sort of recycled that. Uh, but anyway, that's a comic book. Um, I got one romance comic book. This is the all-new Love and Romance issue number 15 from 1973. Um, I'm actually enjoying reading that and uh, might get into more of their romance books from back in the day. Um, of course, everybody remembers this show. This is the Partridge Family number three. Uh, and most of these are in good shape. Uh, a lot of them have, uh, you know, uh, yellowing pages, uh, some some small tears or creases, or you know, these are pretty old, uh, pretty old books, but they're um, they're doable. This is issue number six of the Partridge Family. Issue number seven, uh, and you can tell this one does have a uh, tear there on the cover. But, uh, yeah, I, I knew when I bought them that these were, were, for the most part, in good shape. Number 18 of the Partridge Family. A lot of fun to read. Now, the rest of these are um, war comics from Charlton. And I'm really enjoying making my way through these. And there's several titles um, that were in this collection. This is All New War. Uh, issue number one from 1975. Cool cover there with the uh, Red Baron on the front cover. We have issue number two. I actually have two copies of issue number three. Get that glare. There we go. Two copies. I feel like uh, Don the comic book junkie. I got two copies of one book. Uh, issue number nine. Issue number ten. And issue number forty-four. Forty-five. And now... We move to um, our Fighting Forces in Action Attack, um, issue number one. And it does not say on the cover what year this is from. Uh, I'd have to open that up, and I'm not going to, I'm kind of lazy tonight. I'm not going to do that. But here's Attack number one Fighting Army number 106. These are just very cool. Fighting Navy, number 130. So they had Fighting Army, Fighting Navy. Here is Fighting Marines, number 106. Uh, Fighting Marines, 119. Uh, Battlefield Action, number 63. And I believe this is from 1980. Battlefield Action. I may not be correct on that, but I'm thinking this is the date there, Battlefield Action. Number 64. 65. Uh, 69. 73, 75, 
86. And 88. So that is the, um, the stack of Charlton comics that I was able to pick up. Uh, huge stack there. Again, about 30 bucks I paid for those. Okay, now, I um, was watching a video, one of the last videos that uh, Scott uh, Coast and Bromstar posted, um, and he showed the next stack of books. Um, I'm trying to remember what the context was. It was had something to do with like some of his favorite books that he owned, a favorite series that he'd read, that kind of thing. And so he showed this series, and uh, it looked really good. So I was able to find the whole set. And this is uh, DC Comics from uh, 1991, War of the Gods. Which was a five issues, no, excuse me, a four issue set. And that is number one, number two, number three, and issue number four. I still haven't had a chance to read these yet, but uh, um, looking forward to digging through and then in that same video um, he also shared this book which I was able to pick up and this is Avengers number 221 uh, I believe this is from 1982 uh, if I remember correctly but I may be way off on that but uh, yeah I like this cover where uh, uh, they're asking uh, readers to uh, um, Pick which two new Avengers you think uh, are going to be joining the, the group. Of course, we know uh, from the future there that the, the Hulk uh, joined Spider-Man, became uh, a, uh, an Avenger at least part-time there. So uh, Hawkeye, of course, became uh, an Avenger. So yeah, cool book there. Uh, Avengers number 221. Now... Two more stacks of books. Why did that happen? Let's fix the bag, shall we? On that one. Two other uh, lots of books. Uh, Detective Comics. Uh, got a nice little run of Detective Comics. These are from uh, 1990. Yeah, 1990. This is Detective Comics number 619, and all these are in uh, fine to very fine uh, quality. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're just beautiful, and was very pleased when I was able to pick these up. This is number 619, 620. It's a fun storyline where Tim Drake's parents have been uh, uh, kidnapped and uh, we find out that his mom is murdered. And then what happens to his dad? This is 622. I'm talking away while I show you the covers. 20, 623. This was a fun story with uh, the Joker uh, in it. 624. 625, 626, 627, and I love this cover. It's an anniversary issue celebrating Batman's 600th appearance in Detective Comics. I love that cover. That is uh, 627, 628. Six twenty-nine and six thirty. So yeah, it was a nice little run of uh, of Detective Comics there that I was able to acquire, and then also uh, a nice little 
selection of uh, X-Men books from about the same time period, early 90s. Um, I think these were about 90 or 91, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, this is X-Men uh, number X-Men Classic number 72. Um, Uncanny X-Men 288, and these kind of uh, vary in um, um, quality, uh, but most of them are good or above. Uh, Uncanny 305. Uncanny 306. Um, this is a uh, Uncanny Annual number 16 from 1992. Uh, this is uh, X Men Wolverine versus Ghost Rider um, number nine. Number nine, number nine, and Ghost Rider and X Men, number twenty six. You can see that's uh, sort of a uh, hodgepodge of different uh, X Men books that I was able to pick up from the early nineties there, which was kind of the only time I was ever really reading X Men at all. I always found X Men so. Um, difficult to read back then. I, I, I only read them for a short period of time. Um, and that's in that 92, 93, 94 time slot. Um, I wasn't real familiar with them, so I was learning the characters, but there were so doggone many characters in those books, and everything was so uh, sci-fi, the language, the lingo I was having trouble with. Um, but um, just keeping up, there were so many characters battling for page time and all of that that uh, I don't know. I just had a hard time following it and sticking with it. So, um, but now I'm trying to go back and uh, and reread some more classic X Men stories as well. And I'm looking to pick up some trades uh, to get some of those really great uh, X Men stories. Um, picked up an issue of Mad Magazine. This is issue number 193 from September 1977. Uh, of course, with Charlie's Angels on the front. And um, uh, I was one of those boys that went through puberty watching uh, Charlie's Angels. Uh, 1977, I would have been 12. So, yeah. Um, couldn't wait uh, for every Wednesday night for the next episode of Charlie's Angels to come on each week. Uh, what else did I want to show you in this video? Um, I got stuff just piled up everywhere. Oh, I want to show you this. Hang on. I did get a cool poster that I, that I picked up. I've been wanting this one for quite a while and waiting on the price to come down. I'd seen it, but it was a little bit expensive. Um, and then I saw it at Midtown Comics, had it for, on sale, or for sale, but the shipping was like twice as much as the poster itself. I was like, no, I'm not going to do that yet. Uh, and then finally was able to order it off of eBay and got the whole thing with free shipping for less than $7. $6 and some change. So I was like, yep, that's what I want. So, I've been wanting this poster for a while. As you can see, Joker and Harley Quinn. There's the bottom of it there. So, yes, very excited for adding that poster to the, uh, to the collection. Now i got to find wall space to put it up in somewhere and get it framed and protect it so um holy cow yeah all right i think we're already at half an hour on this video so i think i'm going to stop and uh just to give you a uh a hint 
of some of the things that I have picked up. Uh, I'm going to do a video here, but uh, I've picked up a lot of action figures kind of thing and the whole collection of KISS figures included with that. So uh, I want you to be looking for that video as well. And uh, plus I've got, uh, I'm going to be doing one here on my movies and uh, still trying to figure out how I'm going to do one on uh, card collections and all that kind of stuff. Got a set of Hot Wheels that I want to show you. I'll probably do a video on those as well, uh, separate. So, man, it's tough being the collector of stuff. How's that for a lot? Anyway, thank you guys for being patient and uh, sticking in there with me on the channel. Uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you do, give it the thumbs up and uh, if you don't go ahead and give it the thumbs down if you have to but uh, anyway hope you guys are having a great week so far and uh, getting the books that you wanted to get meanwhile uh, leave your comments below and until next time thank you for watching and I'll see you around